All right. Sounds pretty good to me, too. Amen. Uh, Miss Betty wants me to tune her in so she can uh, watch some of the services if she's not here on it. But listen, I'm glad that that's, that that's a wonderful song, but I'm glad that it's more than a song. We're, if you're saved tonight, you're a child of the King, Amen. and the King is Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. I mean, Paul says, I know in whom I have believed. I know. And I'm persuaded he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. And so uh, I don't always live like I'm a child of the king. But praise God doesn't make any difference. When I was born in the king's home, the king's house, I became a child. Of the King. Take your Bibles tonight. Turn with me, if you will, first of all, to the book of Acts, chapter 5. I'm going to share with you one verse there, and then you can turn with me. I don't have my Bible marked either, but you can turn with me over to uh, <clears throat> 2 Peter, chapter 3. I'm going to, I hope you got your Bibles because uh, we're going to. Uh, use some scripture tonight uh, uh, to back up some of the things I'm going to say. Uh, sometimes we, we preach and, and you, you, you accept that we've done the study, we've done the research, we know we're not, we're not uh, deviating from the Word of God and you accept that. But I think sometimes it's just good when we get on a point or two that we're trying to get across that we actually see what God says about it in His book. Amen. Amen. By the way, it's good to have Miss Lou back with us tonight. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, we got a visitor's card you can sign on the way out, Sister Lou. But we're glad you're back here tonight. I want you to notice what uh, it says. We're going to come back to this in just a little bit. But in Acts chapter 5, verse 29. Uh, <clears throat> I'll come back to this because there, there's some things here I want to share with you. But this verse says in uh, Acts 5.29, Then Peter and the other apostles, notice they picked out Peter, and the reason I say that, we're going to go from there to Second Peter, the book that he wrote. But it says here, Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. We ought to obey God. That doesn't say we always do. But we ought to, according to the Word of God, and I'll come back, I, I think that needs some ex explanation. But anyway, I, I believe that Scripture. Uh, uh, God put it in there, or, or, and so we ought, to, oh, we ought to obey what God says. Amen? Amen? So with that in mind, go with me to Second Peter uh, chapter 3. <clears throat> And notice what Peter himself writes. Now that other was what uh, uh, Dr. Luke wrote in, the, uh, in writing the book of Acts. But sec uh, Peter himself writes this in 2 Peter chapter 3, beginning with verse 10. He's been talking about, if you go back and read, and, I, and I've got a time gets such, goes by so quick. But if you go back and read, he is encouraging those to whom he's writing, and they were some persecuted Christians, and they were going through some tough times and some tremendous tribulation and so forth. And he begins in chapter 3 to encourage them to hang in there. Jesus is coming. Amen. That's, that's, the, that's the gist of chapter 3 on it. But go down to verse 10, if you will. He says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. There's a tremendous number of uh, uh, messages in that one verse talking about the latter days when the day that Jesus is going to come. But then he says something personal in verse 11. He says, Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, if you, if you see, no, he says, this, understanding what I just said, 
realizing that what I just said is true, he says then on, in verse 11, these words, understanding this, believing that Jesus is coming again, looking for the rapture of the church, he says, what manner of persons ought we to be in all holy conversation? That's not your talk. You ought to be holy in your talk too, but that's that we'll get to. Uh, but he, want, I want you to notice where he's, he, see what we ought to be in all holy manner of life and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God. I want to preach a few moments and using God's word on the subject being what we ought to be. Being what we ought to be. The Bible gives some specific instructions. Some specific, you might even call them commands. Folks that tell us we don't have to guess about it, we don't have to think about it, we don't have to worry about it. The Bible tells us specifically in plain English as born again Christians there are some things we ought to do. We're not, we, ought, we ought not to do them because we feel that we're forced to do them. We ought to do them because, listen to me tonight, because God says we ought to do them. Amen. Amen. God says we ought to do them. In other words, we are bound by a spiritual obligation and a spiritual duty to do certain things that God specifically puts in the book that says we as Christians ought to do them. Now, I have to confess to you, I don't always do them. And I would presume, <laughs> looking this crowd over, <laughs> you could probably join with me and after we get done and say, Preacher, I don't always do those things. But that's not the issue. The issue is, God says, we ought to do them. And if we are truly saved and really love the Lord Jesus Christ as we say we do, then we ought to make a sincere effort to obey the Scriptures and attempt to do the things the Bible says we ought to do. Is there an amen on that? I mean, if you don't think you ought to do what God wants you to do, you better examine your life and, and see if you, are, uh, are, are you, that you truly believe what you say. Again, I know that I don't always do them. I wish I could stand up here and say that I do on it. For instance, now go back to Acts chapter 5 for just a moment. I want you to notice something here in Acts chapter 5. Uh, uh, <clears throat> we find a, a passage of scripture that is very apropos to this hour in which we're living it really is you see in, in, the, in the latter part of Acts chapter 5 you see that Paul, uh, Peter and, and the Christians and the apostles of, of the Lord Jesus Christ they were confronted with the evil of their day and the Roman government, especially in that day. And the Roman government was coming down upon them and persecuting them. And the Roman government was throwing them into prison. It's a good story to read and you'd enjoy it. But look what Peter says. Uh, they had come to uh, uh, Peter and the apostles in chapter 5 and verse 28, look what they said. Did we not straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, you have, full, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. They had brought Peter and some of the apostles together. 
And they said, the Roman government, the authorities of the Roman government, said, you're not to preach Jesus. We don't want to hear it anymore. And they were thrown in prison. And he said, we'll throw you in prison again uh, if you do it uh, there. But I want you to notice what Peter writes, or what Peter says here. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> let's, let's go ahead. Then verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, listen to this, we ought to obey God rather than men. We ought to obey God rather than men. Can I say to you tonight, that same principle still is in effect today. Amen? Amen? Now, I want to clarify something tonight because... Uh, <clears throat> I want to be clearly understood. The Bible specifically, and the Bible very clearly, teaches us that we are to obey the laws of the land. Amen? If you don't believe that, go to the book of Romans and read it and find out for yourself. God makes it very clear that we are to be obedient to the laws of the land. But the Bible also makes it very clear that when the laws of the land overstep and, and override the authority of God's word, we are under obligation to obey God rather than man. Nowhere is this more, I mean, you talk about the Bible being alive. Nowhere is this more evident than that we're living right this very moment under this virus curse that's upon us where much of our government has taken control and said to uh, many, many people, not, not just the churches, but many, many people, but it said specifically to a lot of churches, you can't preach during the epidemic. Now what are we to do? Well, let me try to clarify a few things. I hope I can. I hope you, I can. Uh, 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 you see, there's a fine. Follow me close. There's a fine line. A fine line between reasonable laws and suppressive laws. There may be some laws I, as a Christian, don't like. But I'm obligated to obey them. And some of you are, uh, fit that category. I'm well in some of them. I don't like 45 miles an hour, so I'll drive 75. <laughs> no, I don't, are you, I don't have that right. I must obey the laws there. Now, here's what's happened with this virus thing. Someone says, well, you closed down the church. Yes, I did. But I, I did not do it because the government said I had to. We, were, we lived in a, I tell you folks, we got a great governor, and we lived in a, a state, and he, said, he, he did never, ever say that uh, the churches had to be closed. Never. There was, no, there was no official decree in Florida that the churches had to be closed. But, but because out of the respect of the law, that's number one, and out of the respect and fear that we wanted to take care of our people here at Berean Baptist Church, we said we will obey that law and we will close down the church for a reasonable time because we do not want our people to get sick. Amen. We did not do it out of the governor's command. So I hope you see the difference here. We did it out of love and concern and compassion that we wanted to keep our people at Berean Baptist Church 
safe. There. But have on another use another scenario. Have had Charlotte County come in here. I'm not talking about the virus now. But had they come in here one day and say to us, because of what we preach and how we preach and what we stand against. In fact, I told Brother Aaron he's going to get us thrown off the Internet. <laughs> uh, there. But had they come in here and would tell us, you can't preach that, I'd tell them to hit the door. Say, there's a, you understand the difference I'm getting at? If they come in here and say, we can't preach what God's Word says, we're going to close you down if you preach that, I'd just say, go ahead and try it, brother. That's, that's the point. I hope, I hope you're getting it. That's the point that we are to obey God more than man. The virus is not why we did it. Not because they, they, they you know, uh, uh, had these ordinances and laws particularly. I think it's a good thing we did. Amen. Amen. I believe it has to say, listen, other than just a few, the, like the case of uh, Cherie's mother, and that, that was, that's an isolated case. She's doing well. I don't know of anywhere our people have been affected by this. I praise God for that. Amen. Amen. On it there. So let it be clear. We are to obey the laws of the land. But when they conflict with the laws of Almighty God. Then we are to obey God. Amen. Rather than man. That's right. Amen. And that's what Peter was getting at here. They were going to shut him down. Don't you. You can't preach. He said. <laughs> he said, boy, he said, you, wait a minute here. Uh, uh, we ought to obey God. We ought to obey God rather than men. And that ought to apply to every phase and facet of your and my life. I'm going to show you that in the time that I have left. That there are some things in God's Word that the Bible says... We who claim to, we claim to be Christians, we claim to be saved, we claim we love the Lord Jesus Christ. If that be the case, then this book has laid out some things that says we ought to do. Just on the virtue, listen to me tonight, just on the virtue that you're born again and you're saved, and by the fact of that, you want to obey God's word and do what God's word said. Amen. Amen. So there's some things the Bible says, we're going to go use this word, ought. I have to confess again, in, in all of them, I, am, I, 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 I failed in some of them. But that doesn't mean I ought not to keep on trying. Amen. Amen. All right. So let's go to God's Word for just a Bible study. Turn over to the book of Hebrews. Uh, this, I told you, I hope you have your Bibles. Go to Hebrews chapter 2. And we find the first thing the Bible says we ought to do. And when God says we ought, let's, can I put it this way? When God says we ought to do it, bless God, we ought to do it. Amen. Let me say that again. Didn't get much amens on that. When God says we ought to do it, then we ought to do it. Amen. Amen. Period. We don't need to try to wiggle ourselves out of it. We don't need to try to go around it some way. If God says this is what you ought to do, then bless God, we ought to do it. Amen. And I'll go a step farther. If God says we ought to do it, and we ignore it, that's disobedience. Can I have an amen? amen? Number one, the Bible says we ought to give special attention to the Word of God. Amen. Plain as a nose on your face. Look what it says. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore, 
we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, which would be the word of God, they, uh, to the things which we've heard. Why? Lest at any time we should let them slip. How do you know it's the word? Look at verse 2. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just co uh, compense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? That's one of the most misinterpreted scriptures in the whole Bible. People use that to, to talk about losing your salvation. Uh, uh, he's not talking about losing your salvation. He's, uh, he's not talking... Uh, he's not, the word is not reject. The word is what, church? Neglect. If we neglect so great a salvation, if you got it and you neglect it, then you're going to have to pay the consequences for it. Am I right or wrong? Okay. All right. So, just to begin tonight, the Bible says that when it comes to the Word of God, we ought to give the most earnest heed. I meant to look that word up, but I think probably I don't have to. Most of you know, would know exactly what that means, uh, at, at least to a certain degree uh, there. It means that we are to give an uh, uh, utmost attention to what God's Word says. And the word heed has to do Go home and look it up. The word heed has to do with obeying what the Word of God says. If you heed the Word of God, then you do what? You obey the Word of God. I'm heeding the Word of God. I'm obeying the Word of God. I'm doing what God says I ought to do. That's why I believe tonight, I'm going, to, I'm going to try to hit each point quickly. But I believe this tells us one thing, that we as Christians need to, be, need to stay strong in studying and listening and heeding the Word of God. Brother Aaron's been dropping down heavily on that and, good, and rightly so uh, on it there because I'll tell you Satan will do everything in his power you can mark this down he'll do everything he can to keep you from heeding or studying or obeying the word of God There. Now look, I wish I had time. I don't. Why? Why must we heed the word of God? He tells us in verse number one, lest at any time we should let them slip. I'm going to tell you tonight, and then we're going to pass on, a neglect, and he's talking about Neglect, not reject. When we neglect the Word of God, I guarantee you, you're going to begin to grow cold and indifferent and unresponsive to what God wants you to do. Are you with me? Amen. You, you neglect the Word of God and, and sooner or later you're going to to become a backslidden Christian. So we ought to give earnest heed, ought to, to the Word of God. I am so thrilled when I visit folks from time to time and I hear them say, or even when I would visit them, 
I just finished reading my Bible. Or they tell me about how they get up in the morning and the first thing they do, no, the first thing they do is have a cup of coffee and then they read their Bible. <laughs> but, uh, folks, it's, it's imperative. It's imperative. The Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed. It's imperative that you spend some time of every day I'm not saying read the whole Bible in a day, but you spend some time in the Word of God every day. Do you do that, preacher? Don't ask, don't ask me. I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> but, I know, but listen, I know what I ought to do. <laughs> I know what I ought to do. Let's go on. There's a th second thing. Go to uh, 1 Thessalonians. That's back in most Bibles, a little bit before Timothy. Uh, 1 Thessalonians. Not only are we to give heed, earnest heed, to the Word of God, but we find in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1, we ought to watch our Christian walk. We ought to. Let's see what it says. He says here in 1 Thessalonians 4, Furthermore then, we beseech you, brethren, talking to brethren, and exhort you. That's what we try to do when we preach. We're not trying to be mean. We're not trying to come down. We, we need, we're trying to exhort people to do, listen to me tonight, try to exhort people to do what God wants them to do and what they ought to do. And so here's what he says. And exhort you by the Lord Jesus that as you have received of us, what? How ye ought to walk and to please God. So you would abound more and more. But if that was not enough, I'll turn quickly as I can here, but it's in 1 John, listen to this. In 1 John Chapter 2, verse 6. First John chapter 2 and verse 6. I'm talking about the Christian walk. Your, your lifestyle. The way you live. Here's what it says in John, uh, 1 John 2. He that saith he abideth. Oh, I abide in Jesus. Woo, hallelujah. He that saith he abideth in him, ought, ought himself also to walk even as he walked. Church, can that be any plainer? This word walk, you know what it means, just the same as I do. Anywhere that it's used in Paul's epistles, maybe a few ex uh, exceptions. But most of, most of the time when Paul mentions the walk, he's talking about our lifestyle. The way we live. The, wit the witness and the testimony we have. That's our walk as a Christian. And the Bible says we ought to watch, be careful about our walk, or our lifestyle. Amen? Amen. Folks, it is not how you, your, or your testimony, it's not your testimony in here that counts. Can you, can you, can you get with me? It's your testimony out there that counts. In here, your walk's pretty good. But when you leave here tonight, will it be the same? Amen. Wake up. Amen. This is what we ought to do, is be cautious, be careful. Why? Because somebody in this world is watching us, and they, the, 
this has been said, it's, it, it has got so it's trite, but nevertheless it carries a, a very uh, truth. You may be the only Jesus somebody sees. Oh, I know. We're, now listen, I understand. <laughs> we're not to. We can't conform like Jesus did. He was perfect, son of God. But that doesn't relieve us of our responsibility to try to uh, our walk to be as good as it can, because somebody out there in the world is watching you. When Bob's out there at the mall, somebody's watching him. Amen. Amen. They are. Hey. When I go in Walmart, somebody's watching me. Somebody, yeah, I, I may never see, I may never know. But if I get up there and the line, I have to stand six feet behind and there's a line going all the way back to the end and I begin to raise cane about it and yell and, yell and scream, listen to me. That doesn't bring honor to the Lord Jesus Christ. We ought to watch our walk, folks. I can't say it any plainer. I can't. I, I, we ought to. No, I don't always do it. I'm not preaching that, I, that I'm better and do. I, I, I do all these things all the time. I, I know that I fall short. He didn't say. He said you ought to do it. This is what you ought, as a Christian, this is what you ought to do. Let's go to number three. If you got your Bibles. Go to Romans chapter 15. There's a lot in this book about this, folks. <laughs> uh, I guess I didn't even realize it until I began to study it. Number three, as Christians, we ought to strengthen the weak Christians among us. I think I heard Brother Aaron Wednesday, one of the Wednesday nights getting pretty heavy on that. Look at Romans 15, verse 1. I'm not giving you something that I'm making up just to get a sermon. Here's what the Bible says. Romans 15, 1. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. For Verse 3. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. That just simply says this. The, most, the more mature Christian, the stronger Christian in, in the faith, though Christian has grown in the Lord, those Christians ought to be there to help and strengthen the younger Christians and the weaker Christians. It's so easy to condemn, isn't it? Yeah. It's so easy to damn one another and find somebody's faults and, and, and the failures and judge them and condemn them uh, simply because, you know, what, you know what most judgment comes from? And boy, this is why it's so bad. We usually judge someone because they're not doing what we think they ought to be doing. Uh, Paul writes, I believe it's here in Romans, before you judge another, you get the speck out of your own eye. Folks, I'm telling you, you can say what you want. You, you, some of you have been Christians as long as I have. Christians are bad about this. Amen? Amen? 
I, I trust that tonight none here are, but we're you know we're human, and we're bad about it. And when a Christian makes a mistake, a brother or sister, put it that way, makes a mistake, we ought to do our best not to kick them down, <coughs> but to lift them up. Amen. Amen. I, as pastor, are more conscious of this, I guess, because I hear it sometimes. Well, so-and-so did this. And well, so-and-so did this. So-and-so did not do that. Most of us who fall into this trap, most of us have enough on our plate to let God take care of us. As a brother and sister in Christ, I ought to strengthen the weaker Christian. I ought to try to encourage them. I ought to try to lift them up. I ought to try to help them in every way that I possibly As pastor, I try to. I don't always do it. But I want to do it. <clears throat> we want to do it. I'm not talking, and I'm going to pass on and we'll be done in a minute. I'm not talking about justifying someone who's living in wicked, uh, willful, disobedient sin. No, we ought not to justify the sin, but I'm going to pass by with this. We ought to love the sinner. And I try to do that. I don't always do it. I try to. I have a hard time in some cases, I'll be honest with you. Because I don't believe we'll, if they're living in open sin and rebellion against God and it's very evident, I ought not in any way justify that. But if I can help them, I ought to be willing to do that. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Why? Because the Bible says so. Amen. I just read it. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. Amen. I'll go one step farther. If we see a brother slipping into sin and we can and have the opportunity to help them, we ought, brother, to kick them down, we ought to do our best to help them. That's what we ought to do. One last thing. Turn to the book of James, I believe it is. I'm just, these are various scriptures, but this is what's in the book. In, in the little book of James, chapter 4, we ought, and this is a good one to close on, we ought to live our life submissive to God's will. Not hearing very much amens tonight. That's okay. Bible still, Bible still says what it says. Amen. James chapter 4, verse 13 on down. He says, Go to now ye that say today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and we'll continue there a year and we'll buy and sell and get, a ga and get gain. He said, Watch out. Be careful what you predict you're going to do. Whereas, verse 14, you know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor. Whew. Boy, I'm afraid some of ours, the vapor is beginning to get thin. 
I'm, <laughs> yeah, amen. It's a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Now look at verse 15. For that you ought, you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. Brother and sister, that's good advice. Good advice. We ought not to prematurely just arbitrarily make plans that we do not take in the fact of the will of God. Amen. 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 I try to I try to follow this idea, this uh, thought. I've been trying it the last few years because I, and I don't always do it. But I've been trying to build my life around the fact when somebody says this or that, I try to say if it's the Lord's will. If it's the Lord's will. I'll see you tomorrow. Yes, you will. If it's the Lord's will. Amen. Amen. Two things. You might not have it tomorrow. I might not have it tomorrow. So how can I presume? And we, oh, we're, I know that I do the same thing. You do it too. You're just as same a human as I am. Time and time again, I say, this is what I'm going to do. Tomorrow. This is what I'm going to do next week. This is what I'm going to do. I've got, I've got a dream out there in the future. This is what I'm going to do. We ought to precede that always. If it's the will of God. Amen. 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 If it's the will of God. And if it's the will of God, you're going to do it. But we ought to begin. Uh, this is this will change us. Somewhat, I guess. But we ought to begin to live with that thought that whatever I do, I do it if it's God's will for me to do it. I've got plans for tomorrow. One of them I don't like. I got to buy a tire for Little Blue. I plan to do that. But what is James saying here, folks? Let me close. You do, and I do not. You do not. I don't care how young you are. I don't care how old you are. You do not have a promise of a tomorrow. So we ought to begin to live our life under the guideline of the will of God. I will do this. I will accomplish that. I will go here. I will go there. If it's God's will. And then you don't have to think about it anymore. If it's God's will, it'll be God's will. Amen. Amen. If it's not God's will, it'll not be God's will. Whatever happens, happens. But verse 15, I'll read it again and I'm done. For that you ought, you ought to say, if the Lord will, we will live or we will do this. Or that. There are just some things the Bible is clear about. 
You can you can argue them, you can try to get around them, you can just or you can do what most Christians do. Hey, I've been pastor. They just ignore it. Just like some here just ignore it. Ah, the preacher just blowing smoke again and But there's some things the Bible says we ought to do. And if we fail to do some of them, we ought to at least make an effort to do what God... Let me close with this. We ought to make an effort to at least do what God tells us to do. Say, why do you say that, preacher? Well, I've got a little verse here I'm going to close out with. Verse 17 of chapter 4. I've been going to preach a whole message on this. And I will one of these days. Lord willing. <laughs> I might not. But listen to this. This is God's Word. 4.17 Therefore to him that knoweth to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him it is what? Sin. Sin. There it is. And you can try to justify any way you want to, my friend. But when God says it's a sin, it's a sin. You can take that home and chew on it for a while. We ought to make an attempt, at least, as God's children, As, as, be, as saved as we claim to be, we ought to make at least an attempt to do what God says we ought to do. I have an amen. 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 Let's stand together tonight. God bless you. <clears throat> Appreciate so much you being here tonight. You folk are so faithful. Uh, <clears throat> remember next Sunday? I'm glad I found this. Uh, <clears throat> If you will, bring, bring a, a picture of your family if they've served in any capacity in the military, in any, any way. Please bring a picture. We need to honor those who have served, and we also need to honor those who are now serving. We need to honor those who are on the front line of this coronavirus, the nurses, the doctors, the hospital attendants, the people at the grocery store who's there every day serving us. Amen? Amen. Serving us. They, they don't stay home. They can't. They've got to be on, on duty. So don't forget to do that, if you will. Thank you for being here tonight. We're right on time. We're glad you're in God's house. Appreciate it so very, very, very much. God is good, isn't he? Amen? Amen. Father, we love you and thank you and praise you. God, I confess to you tonight, openly and publicly. I do wish I could stand here before my church and say I do everything I ought to do. But I can't say that. You know my heart. I fail in so many ways. I fall short so many times. But that doesn't mean I don't want to do it. And I know what I ought to do. And I do try in these things I've tried to share with our people tonight. These areas. In every one of them, I have fallen short. I have failed God. But I have made the attempt and will continue to make the attempt to do what I ought to do. Thank you for our church. Thank you for our people. Thank you for the faithfulness. Be with those that could not be here today. Be with those, Lord, that are still fearful of this virus. And I appreciate them. I love them. I want them to be safe.
I pray for them. But Lord, I pray that each Sunday we'll see our attendance increase and increase and increase. Because there's a lot of other oughts in the Bible. I didn't get, have no time to do it. The Bible says we ought to assemble ourselves together. We ought to. Thank God for those that are obedient to the Word of God. Bless us this week. Go with our people. Watch over, protect, and keep them. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here.